thanks to the supporters of channel member Michael McCloskey. Well, boys and girls, today we are on a mission to find out where Hashtag United actually play. Hello and welcome to part 41 of Wembley to Wembley. I'm Kevin. Coming up on today's episode, we have that away game in the great city of Hashtag. And then we're at home against now top of the table, Phoenix Sports. There's a cup game in the middle, but we don't care about the stinking cup game. Uh, nothing's happened since you were last with me. Because we haven't, in fact, that's not even true. Because we have played a game. We played a friendly against Crooks United and beat them 7 1. The league table hasn't changed. We didn't get points for it, which I'm a little bit, feel a little bit hard done by. Um, but things have happened transfer wise. Firstly, Ali Felipe uh, was recalled. Um, apparently, we weren't playing him in the position we agreed to play him in. So he's been recalled by Chippenham and gone straight back into their team again. I don't understand how he could be on the transfer list there when he was playing regularly for them before he came to us. Came to us, played regularly. He's gone straight back playing regularly again. Just keep him. Just keep him if you're going to play him that often. Um, so we've had to sign a replacement for him and I think we've actually lucked out here because with him going, the replacement that we've got looks awesome. Josh Chambers, 25 years old, was playing regularly. Played a full season in League 2 just a couple of years ago for Gillingham. I don't understand how we've got this guy. He is far too good for us. And the signing of him as a proper natural box-to-box -box midfielder has led to the tactical change that I've been threatening for a little while. We are moving back to the 4-3-3, which we've used on occasions throughout the save. 4-3-3, wing play. Um, Wright can drop back and play alongside Chambers. Rowe now is the only proper defensive midfielder we've got, apart from McCauley, who's not really good enough. Uh, Rowe can sit there and anchor the midfield, um, but Chambers comes straight into the team on his debut to play as that box-to-box -box midfielder, and goodness me, do we have high hopes for him. But we're getting ahead of ourselves. I said we had a mission today, and I wasn't kidding. Let's go and find Hashtag. And there you go. For those wondering, apparently Hashtag is about halfway between Southend and Billericay. Um, is this what, is Basildon? It's Basildon's a place, isn't it? Is it in Basildon? Everywhere's so close together in the south. There's basic. If we put the air, look, stick the aerial view on. This is basically solid housing or buildings from South End all the way across to whatever this is. You have a little bit of a gap before you get to Billericay, and then it kind of smudges into London. But it's there. That's where hashtag is in Basildon. Um, so let's. I don't know why they're not called Basildon United. Um, let's zoom in, have a look at the stadium. The stadium does look very fancy. Hashtag United FC. This looks like some good facilities at this level. Let's have a uh, a little look. We can't get particularly close. Although, is that a blue bit in the corner? Can we get there? Or is that just a blue building? I don't think we can get there, which is a little bit... It looks like there should be a blue dot there. No, maybe it's just a blue roof on that building. So I think the closest we're going to be able to get is... That looks like the route in. So if we go there, and is it through there? Where do we get to the football ground? Are they building a new one? New stand going in. Is it up here? Right, we've not seen anything resembling a football ground from here. Let's try again from another angle. Um, we should be able to see... Uh, those garages might be in the way. Where are the garages? I can't even see garages. So I think it's down there. Can we go this way? Oh, the next spot is there. We need to get into this gap. We need to look down there. And I don't think we're going to be able to. Um, I don't think we're going to be able to get any closer to hashtag United than we already are. Maybe from that corner there, we're we going to be able to see. Probably not. It's in there. There's a floodlight. There you go. Or is that? That's a mobile phone mast. That's as much as you're going to be able to see, boys and girls. There's people there, though. Look, I think they're people. Maybe they're people. Let's just go and beat them, regardless. So our team to face Basildon away from home is Smalley in goal. A back four of Gibson, Easton, McPhee and Leroy. Rowe at the base of the midfield. Chambers and Wright ahead of him in a very new look central midfield partnership. And then Giles on the left. Best on the right and Butterfield up front. We've switched him up to play as a poacher as well because... Uh, I mean, he's not had a very nice time over the last few matches. I mean, I guess he has still scored three in his last 10. It's not quite what he was doing before, though, when he was scoring for fun. And his uh, his preferred role is as a poacher. So new tactic, give him the opportunity to play in a role that might suit him a little bit better. So let's get the team submitted. 
Remember, we are in absolutely rotten form going into this. But because everyone around us, we're all just kind of beating each other, apart from us, who's getting beaten by everybody. But everyone else around here is just beating each other constantly. So we're kind of in this situation where we could, I mean, if we win our, I mean, I know it's a long way to go, but if we won all of our remaining games, we'd still win the league. It is still in our hands. So a win here today would be pretty important for us because it's a change in tactic, a new look side, new players, or a new player, hopefully, at the start of a start of a new era, second half of the season, where we went and won the league. Wouldn't that be lovely? And there is right, playing a little bit deeper, finds Chambers, our box-to-box -box midfielder, who plays it across to Gibson. It was a nice little touch from Chambers in midfield. And Rowe, over the top for Butterfield, who's now a poacher, and there's his 20th goal of the season. And that was very direct. I mean, we haven't been doing that a lot while we've been playing our control possession system. But four minutes in, first opportunity we've got, Easton has just lumped the ball over the top. Or is it Rowe, actually, who lumps the ball over the top? And Butterfield is there first time to apply the finish. And it's nice to see us play a long ball that wasn't aiming for someone to get their head onto. Playing a ball into space for our good attacking players to run onto. I'm all for that. You've seen there that it's effective. All too many times this season when we've played a long ball forward, it's been aimed for a player to get it in the air. And we just don't have the personnel to do that. Our front three have an average height of about four foot six. They are, they are not going to win aerial battles against anybody ever. But they are all good finishers. They are all good footballers. So I guess the plan is get the ball, get the ball to them. Um, and then Butterfield, I mean, he, I mean there you go. he's managed to play with his back to goal there, but it was to feet. And now Gibson looking for options. He plays it forward. See, that's the ball that doesn't work. Well, on that occasion, it has worked. Butterfield flicks it on. Wright is through. You would want that the other way around, really, because Wright's the only six footer in the uh, in the front four. But uh, I mean, Butterfield, as part of being fouled, did manage to uh, push the ball. That's terrible for McPhee. He is not selling himself to me. The the youngster who's come in from Cowdenbeath in Scotland. And uh, yeah, Riley's missed out on being in this team because Riley hadn't really done anything wrong. McPhee's really in the team for the sake of doing something a little bit different and trying some other options. And that didn't really work, did it? He's hit him on the back. How is it hitting him on the back? Good. He shouldn't be face. He should not be facing away from the ball. The option for it to hit him on the back shouldn't be there. A worst case scenario, it should hit him in the face. I'm not really sure how that's happened, but it's led to us conceding a goal. And now we've got all the work to do. And lovely cross from Giles. That's beautiful. Best can't quite get up above his fullback. He's never. I mean, he's never going to be able to. I'm. I feel like I'm banging a drum that no one can hear. We do, we can't play that ball. Maybe wing play isn't the isn't the system for us because obviously it is all about crossing. But you can cross low. You don't have to cross high and expect your five foot nine winger to climb above a centre back. You can you can drill a low cross in. That, our two of our best most certainly two of our best attackers are wingers. So focusing the ball down the flanks in itself doesn't seem like it's a terrible idea. Um, cross comes in and Smalley just kind of flaps at it and Smalley is just, I don't know what's got into him. He was such a safe pair of hands first half of the season and he's just turned. He, I mean, we are looking at another goalkeeper potentially to bring in because Smalley is starting to cause problems like that. He's flapping at stuff. He's punching when he should be catching. And I've, I can't even explain what he's done there. He's kind of, he's got two hands to it with his chest behind. Just do that and you can catch it. But instead he's just pushed it back out again. But rather than pushing it around a post, he's literally just pushed it straight back out in front of him. There's a hashtag United player there. And we're suddenly losing a game that we started quite well. And 100% of the fault for that one goes with the goalkeeper because it's terrible goalkeeping. Right, McPhee, who made the mistake for the first. It's a lot of individual errors and it's very frustrating. Right, specifically, right. And now Butterfield is in again, drops the shoulder, turns the man. Butterfield's enjoying playing as a poacher. Maybe the answer is just switch back to the other tactic and uh, let Butterfield be a poacher and do his thing because he certainly seems to be enjoying it a lot more 
than playing in the advanced forward role in the control possession system. Rather than him having to do any kind of footballing, his his job in this system is get the ball and score a goal as quickly as possible. And it certainly seems to suit him a little bit better than what we've been seeing from him over the last half a dozen or so matches. The one downside of switching back to the other system is we then lose some of what Chambers is supposed to be coming in and offering us. He is also a natural defensive midfielder, so he could slot in alongside Rowe, but it feels like a little bit of a waste of a player who's that good. A player who played a full season in League Two and is still only 25 feels like a bit of a waste just to sit him in front of the back four. We we want him involved everywhere. We want him playing that box-to-box -box role, which is his best role, because we want him covering the entire pitch like he's done there. And Butterfield's in again, turns and finishes. And goodness me, Jack Butterfield is up for it today. It's three very similar goals, just balls over the top. Maybe one touch and then the finish. This, I mean, he's a poacher, isn't he? Imagine how many goals he'd have if we'd played him as a poacher all year rather than the advanced forward. That man is the definition of a poacher. 3 2, we've taken the lead again. And as you can see, that puts us right back in the mix. One point behind Phoenix Sports with a game in hand on him. Phoenix Sports currently drawing with Jersey Bulls. In fact, they've just gone ahead against the Jersey Bulls. So it puts us back to three points behind with a game in hand, but we have a better goal difference and we play Phoenix Sports in the next match, the next league match after this one. So we could end the episode top of the league again. Butterfield's in again and he nearly had his fourth. Oh my word. He is getting some chances today and uh, until that moment, he was scoring them all as well. Butterfield is having a lovely afternoon. Uh, Giles, less so. Um, Rakeem Best can come on for him. We've got a best on both wings now. And Chambers, on his debut, tiring a little bit. Hasn't played any football all year. So we'll bring on uh, we'll bring on McCauley to play in midfield. And hopefully he's not going to come on and let the side down. Bringing McCauley on is probably the cue that we should drop back into the, the more comfortable system that we're used to and control the possession for the last 20 minutes or so of the game. But as much as that's logical from a footballing perspective... From a football manager perspective, I feel like part of the reason we played so well today is because we've changed the tactic and sometimes the game just wants you to do something different. And I worry if we go back to what we've been doing, the game will punish us for it. Uh, Tom Best finally has a goal as well. So he uh, he might, I mean, if he can get back to his best, if we can get the best out of best, oh, what a time to be alive. Um, but it's Rakeem Best playing it across to Tom Best. It's 4-2 now. We have come here and thrashed hashtag United. We've thrashed Basildon. The Basildon hashtags, I think they're called. And uh, lovely, lovely, lovely. Gibson can come off for Chadder, who we have put Chadder on the transfer list because he just doesn't start often enough to justify his salary. Canerva's also gone on the transfer list. These, these fringe guys, it doesn't matter how long they've been here. If they're fringe players and they're not getting in the team, it's time to move them on. And Chadder and Canerva... That our two longest serving players, the two highest, most influential players that we've got. And part of me does worry that one of the reasons we've had this little bit of a wobble is that our two most highly influential players aren't getting in the team and are probably a little bit grumpy about it. So maybe we need to move them on best. Nearly scores an absolute screamer. I mean, we've scored four today. We've hit the frame of the goal twice as well. Best looks like he is up for it. And that was very, very nearly number five. And that would have been the pick of the bunch. It remains 4-2, though, as we go into the last couple of minutes of the game. And I think this is the first good performance we've seen in a video since the opening matches of the season. We just needed to switch to wing play. I told you all along you can't get promoted at this level doing control possession. It's madness. Lovely, lovely, lovely. Let's go beat Phoenix Sports as well and enjoy our time back at the top of the league where we're supposed to be. We've got to play a cup game first, though, so... I'll do that off camera because no one cares about the Velocity Cup. Well, we limped through against Faversham in the Velocity Cup on penalties. So we've still got that nonsense to contend with. Are we close to winning that yet? Not really. Um, but uh, what we also have is Rakeem Best, the latest player, is unhappy about the club finances, which aren't even that bad. Can't do anything about that. And look how far inside that budget I am. I'm being a good boy. I wonder even. No. I was thinking, could I push budget 
and actually cover the cover the scouting budget off and make everybody happy. I can't. So my actual solution is he goes on the transfer list and gets offered out. There's lots of clubs interested in him. So Rakeem Best is probably on his way out of the club. What are you going to do, eh? Um, we've got a goalkeeper potentially coming in. Endurance Johnson. Um, my director of football actually found him, offered him a contract, and it was declined. But as part of it, I also scouted him. Look how good he is. So I've offered him a trial to just try and remind myself that he exists while we wait for us to be able to negotiate contracts with him again. But hopefully we can get him in as a huge upgrade. But he's got to agree to come into us on trial first. So that's a big if. With best, Rakeem best, being a grumpy boy, it does mean Anton Canerva is back on the bench for the first time in forever. So this could be the start of the Canerva resurgence. He's not had much of an opportunity yet this year. He's probably going to get an opportunity today. Other than that, um, it is the same team that was so good against Hashtag United. So fingers crossed, we can be equally as good against Phoenix Sports. As you can see, Chambers still not fully fit, um, having not played all year. I mean, this is his third game in a week as well. He's gone from not playing a game yet this season to his third game in eight days now. So he is probably going to be a little bit tired, but I'd like to think once we do get him match fit, he is going to become the incredible, awesome difference maker that I was hoping he would be when we brought him in. We've just not seen any sign of it just yet. Smalley, look, already on a 7.1 because he's realised I'm having a look for another goalkeeper. Maybe that's all he needs. Get some form back into him because he was brilliant first half of the season. I never would have dreamt of, uh, of bringing in a new goalkeeper 10 matches ago. But then it all started to go wrong. Look, he's caught that one. This is the Smalley that we had at the start of the season. Maybe he's coming coming back to his best. Wouldn't that be a wonderful thing? What would also be a wonderful thing is if we could score a goal in this match because we could actually find ourselves at the end of this episode not just top of the league, but top of the league with a game in hand, albeit only a game in hand over Phoenix Sports because Jersey Bulls, who have just taken the lead and have got up to third, also have a game in hand over everybody else the same way we do. But let's take it one step at a time. We have to win this football match first. And Smalley's decided he's going to single-handedly do that for us. Oh, it wasn't a save. It was the post. I'm still putting that down to Smalley. I've decided I like him again. Right, we've got a free kick here right on the edge of the area. What can Chambers do with this? If he can hit free kicks as well, I'm delighted he can't. That was poor. Did that take a deflection? No, just gone straight behind for a goal kick. That was a terrible free kick. It didn't even get off the ground. I don't even know what he's trying. I think he's tried to be clever and it hasn't really come off. But not being match fit does have an impact on cleverness, apparently. Gibson hacks it clear from that one. And uh, we are, we've not been the best team again today, have we? At home, struggling against another team, which has very much been the theme of this recent run that we've been on. Um, what isn't the theme is not getting any possession. Obviously, we had lots of possession during our control possession era. But we've moved on from that now. Can we do a goal, please, in this second half? It would be very welcome. What would also be very welcome is for me to stop sneezing. We've reached that time of the year, boys and girls, where it's very hot in my office, so I have to have the window open. That's why you can hear the little birdies. Um, but it also lets the pollen in, and my hay fever doesn't like that at all. I, uh, I mean, uh, my greatest weakness, I don't have any weaknesses, my greatest weakness, grass. Grass does, grass does break me. Right, come on, let's let's have a goal for Kev. It, football was the wrong present, what wrong uh, profession for me to choose with my grass allergy. I want to play on synthetic pitches. Come on, let's let's do a football goal. Oh, Smalley is, um, I mean, he had that covered, but they are testing Jersey Bulls three 0 up in their game. They're having a lovely afternoon, and uh, yeah, we could really do with winning this game just to stop them breathing down our necks the way they are. Based, based on the form that we've had against all of the other teams in this promotion race as well. That's lovely from Smalley again. I tell you what, he's having a good game. Um, I really don't want to be in the playoffs this year because we were great when we were playing against all the teams that we're better than. But this seven or eight teams who are up here in this promotion race, they all beat us. They all beat us all the time. So we've got no hope in the playoffs. What is a positive, though, is that once we get past this match, I think we basically play bottom half teams for the rest of the season. And Butterfield has scored the same goal again. We've seen that goal four times in this episode. Ball over the top for Butterfield, takes a touch, scores a goal. He doesn't do much the rest of the time and he doesn't need to because this is all we want from him. Ball forward, one touch, finish, 1-0. Lovely, 
lovely, lovely. And as you can see, that does put us top of the league with a game in hand over Phoenix Sports and a better goal difference. Jersey Bulls four points behind us. But a run of games coming up where we're playing against teams we're theoretically better than. Right, best is going to come off. Jerome Slew, can he play on the right wing? I'm tempted to bring Canerva on here. No, we'll bring Slew. We'll bring Slew on. He scored in the uh, in the cup game that we just played. We've got to take off Chambers as well because he's got tired little legs. So Slew can come on. Canerva might well be coming on as the third change though. If we decide to change someone else in the attack, Giles is probably the one who'd have to give way for Canerva to come on. But here is McCauley, who's become something of a forgotten man with all these changes we've had in midfield over the course of this season and he's still officially listed as a star player we just tried to downgrade him and he got a proper grumpy on so he's still listed as a star player despite the fact he's never really been a regular starter for us right now who seems to be enjoying life in central midfield and um, plays it across to Rowe who is our new club captain by the way um we took the captaincy off Canerva as part of reintegrating him into the squad we want to try and remove some of his influentialness. I talked about it in the last match. We don't want him to be too influential. So we've taken the captaincy off him and Rowe is the new captain. The former Peterbury United boy. Good pedigree. Used to play for Posh. Good pedigree. As far as I'm concerned, right. Canerva's not coming on today because our fullbacks are both shattered. It's going to be the way when we're playing a wing play system. The fullbacks are getting up and down a lot more than they were when we were calmly and slowly controlling possession and they're going to get tired as a result um so we probably need to get some backups on we don't really have a backup right back at the club uh wood just comes on and plays there when Leroy is inevitably suspended which he is a lot right going into the final five minutes we are still ahead in the game please can we hold on this would be a huge turning point episode if we come out of it with six points right plays it back to Rowe who tries to play it into Butterfield it should have been the ball over the top that's proved so dangerous he can't get there when it's played to him along the ground and now Phoenix Sports looking for a uh, looking for a counter attack we've still got men stretched out of position offside ref where's the linesman I don't think he's giving that as offside is he I mean I guess in the circumstances a draw is okay but I'm a little upset. I thought we were going to be top of the league. I mean, it is still in our hands because we still have the game in hand and the better goal difference. It would have been, I mean, looking at the uh, looking at the match stats, we are absolutely robbing them with a draw. So they deserve a winner here. And it's come back off the post. Oh, I mean, I don't know. I don't know what to think about the change in the tactic. Has it worked? Because we've played really poorly today, but we have played really poorly against the team that are top of the league. So you'd expect us to be quite poor against them. But it doesn't. It really doesn't bode well for potential playoffs, does it? Ross comes in again. Smalley still showing some relatively safe hands. Jersey Bulls have just continued to rattle in the goals as well. Goodness me. Right, it ends 1-1. A little disappointing because I thought we were going to end the episode top of the league. But we're still very much in this race, which I didn't think we'd be in when we uh, when I started this episode. So I guess I guess that's not too bad a situation. We'd have taken that situation at the start of the season, that's for sure. We're not even supposed to be getting into the playoffs, according to this. Um, right, next episode, we'll probably come back halfway between now and the end of the season. Somewhere in there. We'll find a, a game that's meaningful. But like I say, most of these teams are teams in the bottom half of the table. We've got our rivals, Rainers Lane, um, who, by the way, I don't know if I mentioned, we played them off camera earlier in the season. The Battle of Rainers Lane. Um, I made a note for myself a couple of episodes ago to tell you about it and then forgot. So I probably haven't shown you this. But look at the state of this match. A red card for us in the third minute. Another red card for us in the 44th minute. They then scored a penalty, got a red card of their own, and we scored a 94th minute equaliser. If that game on its own doesn't start a rivalry, I don't know what does. But uh, yeah, we've got them to play. We'll, we'll find a, an important, meaningful match somewhere in that run, and we'll come back for that one. Hopefully, we have us top of the league. If you've enjoyed that, please make sure you leave a nice big thumbs up on there for me. Subscribe to the channel for daily Football Manager videos. And thank you very much for watching.